Hey Joel, we're in Area 51. Yep. Oh wow. I like UFOs, so that's great. Uh, so this is a proposal on the uh, Stack Exchange to get a dedicated question and answer site for Ethereum. Ethereum, that's that smart contract thing. Uh, yeah, you've heard about it? Yeah, it's like a blockchain with some singleton VM built into it or something like that. Yep, 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 yep. A lot of questions about it. We can take a look through some of these questions and see if we can uh, have an answer of our own. If not, no, no sweat. We'll just wait for this site to come through and then we'll see what the actual... Uh, answer is going to be. Okay. First question from Pascal van Eck is how to create a multi-signature address on Ethereum. I guess what you use a smart contract to do that. Of course. When in doubt, use a smart contract. Okay. M of N or you can program in whatever rules you want, I suppose. Sure, it could even be a weighted vote or you could have a time lock in, in it or anything like that. So you'll need something dedicated for this, but once you have it, I think it can be used in many creative ways. And presumably at some point you can you can download this from the application catalog and, and, and have it configured for your purpose to a user-friendly web interface and have it deployed as a contract and you can just use it all from your Mist browser. Uh, but we're not there at this point. Yeah, there was supposed to be a name reg contract coming with the launch, right? I, I think there's there's a name reg contract, yeah, but it's uh, it's very simple. And there's no uh, no UI integration yet. Yeah. Uh, next question. I it's from Peter BB. I want to write a contract that relies on hidden information, but Ethereum transactions are public. Any workarounds? Ooh, Anything, of that's a tough one. Of course, everything that you store in the blockchain is accessible by everybody. Um, you you have these. Well, what's the right name? Homomorphic encryption. So certain algorithms where you can apply calculations on encrypted data and the outcome is still, I don't even know what the definition is. This is a bit uh, future science fiction stuff for me. It, it might fit in right with the, the alien theme, but uh, I'm not sure we're there yet, especially not in something that you can run on top of Ethereum. Um, I guess it really depends on what kind of hidden information you would use and, and come up with a workaround. Um, can you think of a good use case where you want to do something like this? Um, sure, like uh, if you want to approve a transaction only if the person who's sending the inbound information has the name of John Doe, and then but you don't want the person to know that John Doe is going to trigger the positive response. Yeah. So something like that would be a pretty good use case, I think. I guess in that case you could... You could store the hash of John Doe in your contract. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody knows the, the the John Doe name, the contract can verify that the hash matches the hash that's in your contract itself. Uh, but of course, everybody could try to crack that by just doing a dictionary attack against such a hashing algorithm. So it might not work in all cases, but maybe in your case it is, uh, it is possible. Um, I guess in other cases, if you... I don't know, if you want to want to send out a tweet or something like that and you don't want to store your Twitter password in the contract, you could rely on a on an external bot agent that, that has a has a smart contract interface and then it does some kind of action based on the transaction that you send to it. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of things like that. Are you, are you planning to build any of those? Uh, at the moment, no, but... Um, I might change my mind. Maybe a Slack integration would be nice. Yeah, I like Slack. Question by Kobe Gurk. How can I issue a token that has proof of work under Ethereum? No, you can't. Am I right? You cannot? Not proof of work. I think you can. I mean, kind of proof of work? How are you? You, could, you could verify that, uh, for example, that a certain a certain hash with a nonce has, has so many leading zeros, just as, as it's happening with all the other blockchain algorithms. And then if you're the first person to find a solution to that, you would reward them on the, on the token balance. Hmm. Uh, another way could be, you could actually use the proof of work mechanism of Ethereum itself. So in your contract, when it gets triggered, you could see what the current block is and who is, what is the coin base for the current block. And then you could reward that miner 
in the in in your in your own asset as well. Oh, that's very interesting. So you need to kind of do a lookup and then basically piggyback off of the Ethereum proof of work stuff. Exactly, and and, the, Some other thing. and then you get miners for free. Well, you, you of course you're for free. You're st you're still rewarding them, but you don't need to set up your own architecture. It's a very interesting form of merge mining. Yeah. Uh, question by myself: How does Ethereum handle blockchain forks? <laughs> Do you know the answer, y'all? Um, same way every other proof of work blockchain handles it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I should have rephrased the question. My question is more like: How, how would this influence your applications and the, on the contract storage? So in case of a fork and then it merges again, so how do you know that you're talking to the right fork and then if it merges, how would you update your, your user interface? Um, I think you should, I, I'll rephrase this question afterwards. Uh, that's a good... Uh, you're saying you might have different state and different smart contracts depending on if it was a forked blockchain or the original blockchain. And you handle state changes? I think you need to make your... your 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 DEP interface always reactive, so you can always update, repopulate everything on the fly. If it turns out that your 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 contract storage changes under you, yeah. another smart question. The interesting thing, if you're the, the kind of interesting thing there is, if you want to try and develop some sort of smart contract best practice, so that you can run on multiple blockchains at the same time. That's that's a tricky thing, but there probably is you know some significant use cases for for that. Ah, you mean multiple independent blockchains? Yeah, a smart contract that you know has different state on different blockchains. Yeah, if you want to do some kind of coin swap from one blockchain to the other, or some kind of decentralized exchange, this might uh, this might apply. So the next question is, how can an Ethereum contract get data from a website? Also asked by Mitz. Listen. Does the sort of data feed best practice pattern stuff we're working on? Yeah, that's probably it. So, for example, you have the you have a website publishing weather information. I think you were the one who wrote that blockchain pattern, even so. Yeah, but the the, the listeners don't don't know about these patterns yet. Oh, 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 I see. Well, I think it, you know it's pretty straightforward. Just that you need someone to be the trusted party that is writing data onto the blockchain, um, and then into a particular smart contract and then you know another smart contract that needs that data is going to be querying that um, that trusted trusted third party the e that's the easiest way exactly and they could yeah. pay they could pay a little bit for for getting the data mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't trust them you could query multiple independent or possibly independent providers or you could build a truth coin smart contract yeah or that. How can you send messages to another Ethereum address via the interface, and what is the size limit? I do not know any of the actual Whisper implementation details at the moment, and how that's all working. Do you? Yeah, I'm not sure if, if the, maybe he's implying Whisper here. Mm -hmm. DirkX, uh, it's, it's really work in progress. If you do another Ethereum address via the interface, and what's the size limit? Yeah, I have to skip that question, probably just downvote it, because I don't understand the question. A, a lot of things with Ethereum, there, there is no real size limit to it, but you're just paying for whatever you consume. So the more the more you want to store, the more you want to utilize, the higher the price typically is. And then individual miners, they can determine if they want to include your message or not. So Ethereum itself doesn't limit this, but the actual miners might be, might be limiting what they're willing to accept. Peter BB again in Web3. How can I get the, res the return result of a function called with send transaction? That's a good call. So if you send a transaction to a Ethereum contract, you want some return back. But the problem is you don't know when this actually gets executed because it actually gets executed in a way that that impacts the the results is when a miner is is storing this or when a miner is executing the transaction in a, in a block. So it's a bit like an asynchronous call. What Ethereum provides, you can, from your contract, you can uh, issue event logs of log events and you can subscribe to them from your user interface. So you can filter all the events that match a certain pattern. And this pattern that can include a specific contract address or a specific keyword or a specific topic that you're interested in. And then 
if your client gets informed that that such a, such an event has uh, has been issued, it will notify your user interface, and you can update your your website or your your client accordingly. Did that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. How does Ethereum prevent executing codes from looping indefinitely blocking transactions by Duncan Carroll? I think that's the whole point of gas, right? Yeah. So yeah. So there's a cost to executing the code, and if you run out of money, then your code stops running. Exactly. So those of you who are used to putting while true in your smart contracts will be stopped. You'll be out of gas pretty soon. So I guess that's, that solves the, the, halt, the halting problem. If you don't know if a program is going to stop at some point or not, you'll just make it stop. Yep. In Solidity, how can I create a function with a variable number of parameters? So this is like a var args kind of function. Mm, I believe you can have multiple function definitions that have the different parameters there. Is that right? Yeah, but then it's not really variable. I mean, then you can define multiple ones, but... I guess I'm not sure if it's even supported in the in the Solidity language yet. Of course, you can you can pass an array, and of course your array could have a variable length. I presume. Yeah, I have to try. We'd have to try this and check the Solidity manual. Oh, this guy is really dumb. Where is the private key for a contract stored? We should definitely download downvote this guy. Oh, you cannot vote on your own post. Ah. <laughs> uh, Damn. It's a trick question. A contract, uh, they don't have a private key. So it's like a, they're, they're recognized as a sp special case in the Ethereum nodes. And uh, the rules for modifying the, the state of a contract and sending transactions out of, of the, or, or sending value out of the, the address for that is by actually executing the, the bytecode of the contract that is, that is associated with it. It's the sort of thing I would expect from these Ethercast guys is asking these sort of dumb trick questions on Stack Exchange. Where are your dumb questions, Joel? Did you post any yet? That I use multiple IDs, you know, to, to do this. I think you're that I think you're the Duck X guy at the bottom. I mean everything is downvoted from him. Why is Ethereum switching to proof of stake by Keo? I think that's a pretty um, great question and ultimately comes into the limitations of proof of work. I mean, it's great for incentivizing people to join early, bootstrapping a network, all the things that kind of Bitcoin is good for, but it kind of has problems later on with long-term and medium-term incentivization and the costs that you need to actually run the network. Yeah, yeah, and if you want to improve the, the amount of transactions that you can process at some point, yeah, right. you so want to reduce... The, the scaling is just for actual transaction throughput which is really the big problem with any smart contract system. It's, it's not going to work with, with proof of work. So. Yeah, 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 that's true. And, and we don't want the network to be super centralized either, which is what's happened with the, the Bitcoin mining network. Exactly. It's a specialist thing. It's one guy in China and it's doing everything, right? Pretty funny guy, though. I met him. He's, he's, he's cool. And now it'll just be, with proof of stake, it'll just be Vitalik having all the, all the stake in the network. Yeah, well, that's interesting because, you know, he's done the distributions, you know, based on some of the formulas in Piketty's book and stuff. So, you know, the actual Ethereum network seeding is probably the most equitable economic system that's ever been designed so far. Yeah, we, we, we have to check back on this in, uh, in a year from now, just to mark your, mark your calendar. Ryup DX asks, how will Ethereum avoid mining centralization due to network latency, given the one second times proposed for Serenity. I think with Ser Serenity, wasn't that the proof of stake? I assume that's what it is, yeah. So I guess it will be avoided by not having any mining anymore. Yeah, um, I guess network latency could be an issue with one second block times. I don't, that's an interesting question. It kind of like, they may not be realistic. I don't know how realistic these like estimates are, but you know, it depends on the throughput of, of how fast the actual network can synchronize. I'd suspect that anything under um, 500 milliseconds is going to be pretty hard to reach in a second. Maybe it's feasible, I don't know. To see that. Jim K. Berry asks, what are the issues involved in selecting gas price for transaction? I guess the issue can be that you select a gas price too low and then your transaction won't be mined. And if you select a value too high, then you might be overcharged. Um, 
how are we doing these gas estimates these days? Probably so, so, so there's two things. So the, the, the gas and the gas price. Mm -hmm. So the gas that you need for a transaction, you could actually, well, you could know that if you understand the, the limitations of the, of the execution that you're doing. So if you know how complex or how much data you're sending. Yeah, but how can you do, what's the best way of figuring that out right now? Uh, there's, a, there's an estimate gas uh, function that allows you to estimate gas for a certain transaction. That's one way. Another way is to write tests for your contract and then in your test verify for what cost they actually execute for. Oh, yeah. I don't believe in writing tests. So. Yeah, you, you must be based in Silicon Valley, right? That's the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the latest trend. ADD. ADD. S, S, driven development. <laughs> Uh, and the gas price, well, you can, if you check the, if you track the, 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 the latest blocks, I can, I think you can see what the gas price is going for. Yeah. So that way you can kind of have an estimation what miners are willing to accept. Oh, uh, yeah. How can I debug a smart contract as by MITS? Oh, my God. MITS. I think you should just fire the developers, probably, and get someone who can write one that doesn't need debugging. Yeah, I think a uh, best practice for contracts, especially since you cannot update contracts, is just to write just to write uh, flawless contracts. So if you don't have any bugs, you don't need to update your contracts in the future, and you don't have, need to worry about all these kind of things. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but seriously, uh, I think in a mix in a mix IDE, you could you're supposed to be able to step through a contract, so that way you can debug it on the EVM level step by step. And even though I just said I don't do this, um, test code maybe can help you. I heard that. Some people write test code. Exactly, and you could you could also use these lock events at certain points. So you can maybe you can lock some kind of thing that's happening. Of course, this would also influence the cost of uh, of the of the contract itself. So maybe it's more something for a test environments than debugging in production. But uh, that might be if you're really stuck. Uh, what uh, what also helps is just to cut your contract tracked in, in smaller pieces and just verify that they work individually before creating some kind of mega construction. Probably some more debug best practices will uh, will follow in the future. I hope so, because I'm tired of firing all my developers. PTBB asks, how can I verify an Ethereum transaction signature from inside a contract? I'm not sure I understand that question, so maybe. I'm not sure that data is actually available in the context of your contract, but there are some cryptographic functions available. So there's the, the SHA, SHA3 and the RIPE MD something. And so, some other kind of hash functions are available, SHA256. Uh, and there's also the EC Recover. And with EC Recover, you can verify an elliptic curve signed message against a certain, certain address or against a certain key. So I guess you could use that to verify that something is signed by a specific address. But you need to construct the, the transaction specifically. This might be a good, or maybe not a good way, but this might be a way where you want to do some kind of air-gapped cold storage transaction. On an offline device, you would create a transaction and then you would copy it to the live network and send it there without risk, risk, risking to expose your uh, your keys. Yep. So this must be a question by you. Uh, what is the maximum amount of data that can be stored if Ethereum is used as a decentralized file storage blockchain and Ether cost versus amount of data? Well, you need to pay for all the storage. So the maximum is really determined by, by the amount of guests that you're willing to, uh, to pay for. Yep. There we go. You up for some more, Joel? I was just making some easy questions for you, you know, yours. So. How can I debug a smart contract? No, we had that already, sorry. Yeah, yeah, well, so how can I edit a buggy smart contract? You cannot edit a contract once it is submitted. Uh, it looks like even this stupid mids guy asked exactly the same question. <laughs> which is kind of what I would expect of him. Yeah, sorry. Don't, don't, don't do it. So if you want to update your logic. Now that said, you know, you can create a meta top level contract that will select which other contracts it's using for specific implementation details that could toggle between different other contracts based on some, you know, decision-making logic. So Dennis, what was his name? Dennis McCormick was working on this uh, duck concept, decentralized organization update guy, something like that. So he was working on something that exactly was doing what you described, but since then he has uh, defected to Eris. So I'm not sure what is uh, who's currently working on this. What makes the Ethereum mining algorithm ASIC resistant? I actually don't know exactly what that is. I haven't followed the slasher progression 
very carefully. It just requires a lot of data to be in memory. Yeah, so that's basically what ASCII, the, at least the mining pools do. My miner isn't listening on stats.ethdev.com. You need to run a specific the Ethereum netstat client. I believe the instructions for doing that are on the forums. So you should just follow that information and then you should be good to go. How do you use your Coinbase address for mining? So you can set your Coinbase address in your Ethereum client, and that means that if you mine a block, you would be rewarded for that. And if you don't set it, you don't get rewarded for the block that you just mined. Just set it to an address of your own, and you should be good to go. I'm mining right now. Did you set your Coinbase? I don't actually see how to do that and missed. Uh, okay, Joel, I think that's it for now. Thank you, Oris. Thanks for all your lovely questions. Talk to you next time and don't forget to upvote this this proposal on Stack Exchange and post some of your own questions. We're almost there. Absolutely. We shall overcome.